as a church. So 1 Corinthians, the church, third chapter, verses 5 through 8. You may be familiar with this passage. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Our text is going to be out of John chapter 9. And if you guys have been here long enough, you know we, a couple years back, we preached through the entire gospel of John. So I really, I really don't want, I, not only do I not want to, if the Lord help me, I don't, want to pre, I don't want to preach anything out of John chapter 9. But I do want to lift up some things out of it. Okay? So 1 Corinthians, the third chapter verses 5 through 8. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It said, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, I being Paul, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, working towards the same goal. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about trusting, trusting the process. Amen. 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 That's why we all wear in sixes gear. As a church, we have to learn to trust the process. Because it'll work if you work it. Are you with me? Our God in heaven. Thank you for your process. Encourage our hearts to trust in it more. Amen. Amen. You may be seated all over the... Trust the process. When the 76ers chant, trust the process, they are referring to a strategy used by former general manager Sam Hinkie, in which he implemented uh, when he took control of the team before the 2013 and 14 season. The process, referring to Hinkie's plan, was to find the best way to acquire top talent for for the Sixers organization, and he he went about it by getting as many assets assets in uh, professional basketball in terms of draft picks, young players, players with trade and team friendly contracts. He tried to get as many assets as possible and use them in a way to bring a superstar player or play with the hope that they could help turn the team around and make them both a playoff and a championship contender. Amen. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, and hopefully this year, Markel Fultz, Ty, should be working out with him, getting his jump shot on. Hopefully these guys... Uh, Collectively, those two and, and even, even Markel Fultz became the face of the organization and, and, and also are the image that comes to mind when the chant is made in the, in the Wells Fargo Center, trust the process. And they did so by leading the team to the playoffs last year. Just like there is a process to rebuilding and repairing a sports franchise, so there is a process for rebuilding and repairing broken and often painful lives of people who do not know Jesus. As sports fans have trusted the process in the rebuilding of the 76ers, so we as born again believers must also trust God's process for redeeming and reclaiming the lives of his lost children. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians three and eight, first Corinthians chapter three, verses five and eight lays out God's process. Okay? 
the, the Sixers process was to get assets. Hey, we're going to take some years. We're going to be low in the rankings. We're not going to have a lot of wins. But our process, our plan, we're going to get some ass, uh, uh, assets. Draft picks. We're going to trade some contracts that are not helpful to us. We're going to get some guys out of the D League. We're going to work it out. But if we stick with it, the process will work. We'll get some number one draft picks. We'll get some free agents that will want to come here. And in a, if, if we stick with it in a couple years, we'll not only be in the playoffs, but we may even give Boston a run for their money. Let the church in Philadelphia say amen. Like, do we not have any success, fam? Good night. It's hard. Man. Man. Good night. I didn't expect that. Last Sunday, I expect to, to work up here. This Sunday, I thought, man, we just said, yeah, man, good night, but it's okay. So, 1 Corinthians, God, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians again. And I'm reading it out of the New Living Translation. Okay? Same thing you just read. This time, I'm just going to read it out of the New Living Translation. And I want you to li listen to it. It says, after all, who is, who, who is Apollos? And who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news of the word of God. Amen. That's all we are. Amen. We just happen to be the people or the person who shared the word of God with you and you believed. Amen. So that's all we are. He said, each of us did the work the Lord gave us. Amen. We did what the Holy Spirit instructed us to do in God's process in your life. Amen. That's all we did. Here it is. He said, I planted the seeds in your heart. That's what Paul said. And Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. Amen. Trust the process. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together for the same purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing different things, yeah. but for the same goal. Yeah. Right? It's the process. And this is what I love. If you want anything good out of the message, here it is, the last sentence. And both will be rewarded for their own work. Yeah. All right? Amen. That's the process. Now look at John 9. I'm just going to lift up John 9. I'm going to pull out some things here in John chapter 9 that kind of makes this process evident to us as Jesus works God's process. So you got it? John 9. And we know John 9, the healing of the blind man. So here we go. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. Disciples asked, who sinned, this man or his parents? Everybody look at me. Stop assuming something's wrong with everybody but you. You know, and I'm going to tell you what, I love the disciples. And I don't love them because <coughs> of their not necessarily for their, their great contribution to the Bible and to the canon of Scripture. I love the disciples because they were open about who they were and where they were. These guys are not very polished at this juncture in their walk with Christ. They look at someone and they immediately assume something's wrong with them. You know why they assume something was wrong with them? Because they were not like them. Amen. Amen. So it means something must have went wrong. Jesus, well, who messed up? Did he mess up? Did his parents mess up? There's nothing wrong in God's plan. Right. Everybody is every way by God's design. Amen. 
We got to one day wake up to the fact that nothing catches God off guard. Oh my God, I didn't know. Yeah, God knew he was going to do that. Watch this. Look, look what Jesus says. Well, G3. Jesus said, neither him nor his parents. But that the works of God should be revealed in him. Listen, listen I'm going to tell you what he said. He's the way he is because that's how God wanted him. Look, and he wasn't saved yet. In his handicap, whatever you want to describe his physical condition, it also equated to his spiritual blindness. And if you study the text, he was also an example of the Pharisees' spiritual blindness. He represented blindness in both, not only himself, but also in the Pharisees. But he said, no matter how you look at it, he's the way he is because that's how God wanted him. And God wanted him that way so that God could do something unique in his life. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So it's nothing wrong with folks. Stop trying to say you got to fix them. You don't have to fix them. They're the way they are because that's how God wanted them. Why? Because God's got a plan for them. Our job is to do what? Trust the process. Y'all weak today. I, I put my shirt and y'all still don't get it. Trust the process. All right, here we go. So he said, in the Jesus, I must work the works of him who sent me. While his day, night's coming, no one can work. You know what that means? You have a short amount of time. Everybody look at me. You have a short amount of time. To do what God has assigned you to do. Amen. You hear me? You don't have all day. Quit thinking you got the rest of it. No, you don't. You've got today. Why? Because tomorrow is not promised. You better quit quit putting off praying until tomorrow. No, you don't. You better pray today. You may not get a chance to pray tomorrow. You follow me? Good. He said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Here is verse 6. When he has said these things, spat on the ground, make clay, mixed with his saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said, go wash. So the guy, he went, he washed. Verse 7 said he came back seeing. The first step in God's process is he wants people to experience the love of God. Amen. That's the first step in God's process. And for this man, he experienced the love of God through the miracle of receiving his sight. Amen. Because at that, up to that point in his life, no one had ever been able to do that for him. Amen. You read the rest of it. We're going to walk through. He said there's never been recorded in history up to this time of a man being born blind and getting his sight. So this guy receives a miracle and this miracle represents to him an, exp an encounter with the love of God. Amen. And I, I'm going to tell you why I can claim it as, as, as an act of a love of God because guess what? In Jerusalem, in Judea, there were other men who were blind. Right. He was not, the text didn't say he was the only man. No, he was just a man who happened to be. There were other guys born blind, but what? God singled him out. And he sent his son Jesus because his disciples were too crazy. Y'all missed that. Had his disciples gone, the guy would have never experienced the love of God. They would have done what? They'd have walked by him. Why? Because they thought something was wrong with him. But he sent his son. And his son knew what? You're getting back. Good night. 11 o'clock and y'all just now warming up. If we don't get out of here, it ain't my fault. It's your fault. Y'all should have been behind me. So here it is. Experience the love of God. Two things. Write them down. I want you to write them down. Under experiencing the, the love of God, the first thing that must happen, people must experience the love of God through you. Every act of kindness, 
every act of love, every demonstration of mercy from you to another person is an opportunity for that person to experience the love of God. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? This guy didn't get healed in the church. He was outside. You follow what I'm saying? It wasn't, it, 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 it was the Sabbath, but he had a, God, Jesus saw him. The Holy Spirit said, this is the guy, and he went over and did what God wanted him to do. Amen. And the guy experienced the love of God. So the first thing you got to notice, for folks to experience the love of God, they first have to experience it through you. Amen. So that means what? Every day, we have an opportunity to demonstrate or share the love of God with somebody. Amen. Okay? We just have to trust the process and be open to the Holy Spirit yes. to do the same thing he did with Jesus and say, look, that's him right there. Amen. That's her, right? Good. Her. Say to her what I told you this morning in your devotion. Amen. And if you do it, you're playing your role in what? The process. Amen. You gotta trust the pro but to trust the process, you gotta know the process. Yes. Jesus was walking, minded the Holy Spirit said, That's the guy. Jesus said, Okay, guys, stop. I gotta go do this. This is my assignment for the day. So first they gotta experience it through you individually. Secondly, this is important important why I'm putting it in the church context. They people must experience the love of God through us collectively as a church. Amen. Amen. Everybody look at me. If anybody ever comes into our church and leaves feeling either the same or, God forbid, worse than when they got here, woe be unto us. We have failed God miserably. And we feel God in that every Sunday, every time we gather, because we're too much like the disciples. We look at them, we don't know them. We look at them, they don't look like us. They don't, they don't sit on our row. So we mistakenly assume that we don't have a role to play in their process. And I hate to say it, there are folks who have left our being in our fellowship and they felt worse leaving than they did when they came. Woe be unto us. We have a wonderful opportunity to cause people to experience the love of God. Now in this case, Jesus did a miracle. You can experience the love of God by saying hello. Good morning. If you come in the church and you see a visitor sitting by themselves, don't be so much in a hurry to get to your seat. Maybe the Holy Spirit wants you to sit somewhere new this Sunday. Hey, Doc. You could, hey, where, where you from? You get this. Hey, hey, hey. But guess what I'm doing? He's experiencing the love of. Oh, I could have did this. Meet and greet. Hey. Hey, Sister Mary. Hey, Sister Anita. How is that helping him experience the love of God? But we do it every Sunday. Right. And we're not trusting the process. For anybody to come to Christ, the first thing that must happen, they must experience the love of God. Amen. Amen. It's not that the word of God is ineffective. Is that the word of God doesn't have a forerunner. John the Baptist had one role. To go what? Before Christ. And prepare the way. Don't you know every time you're nice and kind and gentle and merciful to someone, you know what you're doing? You're preparing their heart for the word of God. It's coming. But someone's got to go. Come on, Pop. You're an old farmer. Someone's got to go and do what to that ground? You got to turn that soil up, man. You can't take no good seed and throw it on messed up ground. Are you with me? So the first thing that has to happen is what? You've got to what? Experience the love of God. And everyone in here is called, has an opportunity and a chance 
to serve in the process. Amen. And all you got to do is just be nice. Right. Be kind. Right. If it look like they're having a bad day, go cheer them up. Right. If they look like they're missing out on something, you provide it. Give it to them. Amen. Don't sit there with your big Bible, custom printed, and say, man, they don't have, why don't they have a Bible? Give up that Bible. Yes. At this point in your maturity, the word of God should be more in your heart than in your head. You should know that. When I said first, even if you didn't know the scripture, the soon as said, uh, Paul planted, you should have just finished. Apollo watered, but God, you should know that by now. Right, right, right. The majority of it. Some of you are new in Christ. But you should know that. Right. See, you know what Get the Bible up. Amen. All right? Touch your neighbor and say, experience the love of God. <laughs> All right, go down to verse 35. You, if I read the rest of it, I'll be tempted to preach it, and I don't want to preach. So go to write the 35. Next point. You guys got 35? Look what it says. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Anybody know where they cast him out from? They kicked him out of the church. How in the world do you kick someone out of the church when the church, for most people, is the place of last resort? Don't you know when you kick someone out of the church, you are saying, I am sending you to hell. That's what you're saying. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, my father's house should be a house of prayer. Yes. Where people will come and get help. Amen. These guys kicked them out of the church. Right. You read all that in there and figure out why, but I don't have time. 35. So look, so, look this is why I'm telling you, you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't see him get kicked out, right. nor was he there when they kicked him out, right. nor did he get it magically. Right. Right. Jesus had his ears open uh -huh. and heard people talking. Have you? Did you hear what happened to the blind man? They called his mom. They called his dad. The preachers got upset with him. The ushers kicked him out. No fan, no water. Let's kick them out the church. And Jesus heard it. You find what I'm saying? You could be used. Everyone said, God, Lord, I want to, Pastor, I want to be used. I want to know the will of God. You want to know the will of God? You want to be used? Listen. There's opportunities for you to serve all around you. But you got you got to open your ears. Bible said, Spirit, he that has an ear, let him what? Hear what, what, what the Spirit is. Jesus heard. That's the guy. I just opened it up and kicked him out. Here it is. And here it is. And when he had found him. You got it? What happened? He heard. And watch it. Jesus went and found him. He didn't tell his disciples, go get the blind man and bring him. Now you guys do realize I'm talking about the son of God. He went and found him. All right? Here it is. I'm working the process. He got him. Here it is. Now, I, I, it, Jesus, Jesus doesn't have to preach because he is the word of God. Right, right. We preach because we share the word of God. So the second step in the process, they have to hear about the love of God. Right. He, had, he had experienced it, but he didn't know what he had experienced. Right. All, like he told the, the Pharisees, he said, all I know, I was blind. But now I, said, I can't explain it. I don't know who did it. All I know, he told me to watch, and I came back seeing. That's all. That, that's my testimony. So now, G, look what Jesus said. Jesus said, Do, "Look, look at me. Look at me. Take note of what he didn't say." 
Read it. Read, read what he didn't say. Now, all y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Half of you are so scared, you look down anyway. You can't read what he didn't say if it's not written. The point I'm trying to make is, it's not written because Jesus, Jesus didn't ask him, what happened at the church? Jesus didn't have, hey, what, what happened to you after I... Jesus didn't concern himself with any of that non-essential stuff. Right. This guy had experienced the love of God, but didn't know it. Right. So now he's got to hear about it. And Jesus said, read what it said. You read what it said? He said, do you believe in the Son of God? We should all know. Listen, everybody look at me. That's the summation of the gospel. Yes. Right. That's all Genesis and Revelation is about. Right. It's bringing fallen humanity to the point where they believe in the Son of God. And in order to believe, they must have they have to first what? Yeah. Hear. Hear. Yeah. Hear. So now Jesus heard. Now Jesus is ensuring that the blind man hears and he speaks audibly into his ears and says, do you believe in the Son of God? The, the second point in the process, they must hear about the love of God. Yes. Here it is. The first way they hear about it is through you individually. Okay? And the way they hear about it is in two folds. They hear about it first through your testimony. Amen? Everybody look at me. Every child of God must have a testimony. All right? Let me work backwards. If you don't have a testimony, you're not a child of God. Because if you don't have something to say about what God has done in your life, then evidently God has not done anything in your life. Am I, are you with me? This is not fancy. I'm, this, is, this is straight no chaser. If you're a child of God, you need to have a testimony. Somewhere, someday, a week, somewhere in your life, you experience the love of God. And somebody explained to you that it wasn't magic, it wasn't hocus pocus, but that that was God working through Christ in you, causing you to know who he was. So you got to have a testimony. Right? Testimony, your story. What, what, what has God done for you? Now, after your testimony, this is the second thing every child of God must have. You got to have the word of God. Right? It's not enough to tell them what God did. You have to be able to tell him, tell them why God did it. Amen. And here's the answer. You got to have the word of God. You don't need your cell phones just to come here and take selfies. Whip it out on the job. John 3, 16. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Ephesians 2 and 8. Here it is. This, that's my story. Now this is why and how it happened in my life. Right? So you got to have a testimony. Then you've got to have that. That's what you have to have. Because what? God can use you where? Anywhere in the process. He can use you on any day. He can use you in any location. Any, any geogra Anywhere around the world. God can use you. But to use you, you've got to one, be willing to show, let them experience the love of God. If, you, if God keeps you involved in the process, now you've got to explain that love of God to them. And you explain it by equating it to your story. Yes. Your testimony. Yes. Now they're interested because now they've got a story. You've got a story. What's going on here? Let me explain. Yes. Now you bring in the word of God. Yes. Are you with me? That's individually. Now the second thing, they got to hear about the love of God. And then secondly, they must, they must hear about the love of God through us collectively as a church and when we come together as the church that's the preaching and teaching of the word of God Amen. listen when we gather as believers the highest 
and greatest thing we do is lift the word of God. Amen. That's, what, that's what we have to do. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why? Because what? That's God's process. I'm not making this stuff up. This is God's process. Are you with me on that? So they experience the love of God. They hear about the love of God. That means we got to follow up, tell our story, testimony, give the word of God. And now here we are, the, the third step in the process. They must believe and accept the love of God. Right? Go down to verse 38. That's what I got. Verse 38. Well, let's read it. Son of God. Verse 36. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Everybody look at me. They don't know who Jesus is. They either they genuinely don't know, or what I find is more common in our time, they have a misunderstanding of who he is. They're coming out of different religions. They're coming out of different backgrounds. I think it's common for us to say that people know about Jesus. They know him, they know Easter, but they don't know who he really is. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. This is important. And they can't. You hear me? They can't. Read the story. They can't because they are what? Blinded. Stay with me. You're doing good now. Why are they blind? No, no, that's, that, go the, let me go another way. They're blind. Who made them blind? God did. God did. Not their parents, not them. God did that. And he did it when he cursed Adam. Therefore, all the sons and daughters of Adam are born like their father, blind. So don't, why am I going this way? One, I want you to understand, too, don't get mad at them because they don't know God like you. They can't. The Holy Spirit literally stands and blocks the word of God. I will not allow them to hear it. Literally, this is what's happening. Until God initiates the process and someone causes them to experience the love of God, somebody else comes along and causes them to hear the word of God. Now repentance breaks out in their heart and now God heals them of spiritual blindness. Until, I'm taking your book, sorry. Until that point, they can sit in church every Sunday and will know less about God than a homeless man on the streets. And they can sit in church every Sunday. They can download the sermons off the website. And they will know. Now listen. They may be able to memorize the Bible. But they will not know God. The Bible said. He reveals himself. To who he wills. So if God doesn't want to heal them. Of spiritual blindness. They can't be healed. That's why we have to work in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit prompts us, that's God saying, I'm starting the process in her life. And all I need is some guys on my team who do what? Trust the process. That's all I need. I need someone to just be nice to him for a couple days. 
I need someone else to come along and tell them their story because it's similar to his. Oh my God, I got a real church. I got a real. Then I need someone who's weighty in the Word of God to come along. It, it may not happen on Sunday via the preached word. It may happen on a bus stop with the seven minutes y'all ride the bus together. In that time, you can walk them down the Romans road. This is what it is. That thing you're feeling, the reason why you're crying while we're talking, here it is. It's the word of God. That's the love of God. That's Christ working in you to reconcile you back to Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, trust the process. Now here we go. We get down to verse 38. He, he said to them, have, have you both seen? Verse 37, Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you now. Here's the danger with everything I just said. What if God chooses me to be a part of the process? What if I'm the conduit for them to experience the love of God? Maybe God chooses me so that they can hear the word of God. Maybe God chooses me because I am the one to lead them to Christ. Everybody stop. Look at me. Listen, listen. Most important thing I'm going to say. As a believer, every year as a believer, you ought to be attempting to lead someone to Christ. Amen. Amen. Not enough to bring them. Not enough spirit. You And you got to do it so that what? When he calls your name, you're ready. Amen. You don't want him to call you. Say, all right, I need you to. She's ready now. Her heart's good ground now. This is something. Lead her to Christ. When y'all get home from work, her heart is going to be lead her to Christ. You can't be like, uh, God, I don't. <laughs> but if you're already working in the process, how many know those guys? They just don't get in the game and start playing. Or while they not on television, they doing what? They practicing. They working it out. Uh, yeah, that didn't work. Go back there. Let's try it again. So that when when the coach does call them in the game, right. Amen. Seriously, everybody, look at me. Everybody. If God were to call you to lead someone to Christ right now, could you do it? Yes. yes. Do you know what to say? Yes. You know what to look for? Yes. What do you look for? Good. Someone, I got one church member who's honest. She said, I don't know. You look for a broken heart. They cannot receive Christ proudly. That's not receiving him at all. They're saying, I don't really need God, but to get this job, I'll accept him if that's what... No, no, no. You look for that brokenness in their spirit. Sometimes it may be accompanied by tears. Sometimes it may not. They said, they said of the, uh, the tax collector, his brokenness was demonstrated by the fact he couldn't lift his head. Read it. Luke. He didn't cry. He could not look up at God. And it was a sign his heart was ready for the process. That's what you got to look for. You find, if they don't come broken, they can't receive the word of God. That's which is what, they're not really repenting of their sin. They still think they're good. You follow what I'm saying? But you got to be able to lead them to Christ. Amen. Jesus is working with this guy. He could tell that his heart is ready. He said, Lord, who is he? He said, if you point him out, I'll believe him today. Jesus said, all right, this guy's ready. Holy Spirit, you agree? Holy Spirit said, yep, I agree. So here he goes. This is what he said. He said, you have both seen him. And here, so this is the point I wanted to make. I got down here and y'all got me all going left. Here it is. Here it is. Everybody look at me. Don't let your life be a lie. Amen. Amen. Instead of drawing someone to Christ, you'll push them away. 
Now, remember what I told you happens in the process. Amen. The best part of the process is that at the end of the day, guess what? Everybody gets paid. Amen. <laughs> now, don't, 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 don't shout yet. You get paid for working with the process. You also get paid for working against the process. If God has someone that he's already pointed out, experience the love of God, hear the word, hear the, hear the word, ready to believe, and you're there to deliver, and you hinder them. Listen to me. Won't be under you. Won't be under you. Because guess what? You're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. For hindering someone God has chosen. Amen. Not you. Amen. Not your friends. Amen. Not your church. Not the, God chose them. Amen. But because of your arrogant self. Amen. Hear me. You're going to get paid. You with me? Here it is. So don't let your life be. Jesus didn't have to say no more. Jesus said, you're looking at him now. Amen. Right? Here it is, 38. Then he, look what the guy said, verse 38. He said, Lord, I believe. That's the third step in the process. The third step in the process, after experiencing the love of God, after hearing about the love of God, they have to believe and accept the love of God. And here it is. The love of God is this. It's the love of God. Right. Right. I, I, don't know, I don't know any other way to say it. John 3, 16, Ephesians 2 and 8, Romans. This is God's love. Yes. That instead of destroying us, he killed his only. He laid all of our faults on him. The Bible said he became our propitiation. Our substitute. If you don't accept Christ, you openly reject God's love. It's just that simple. It's no... Jesus didn't fix it up. He didn't butter it up. He didn't try to hoop it up. He said, here I am. And the guy knew it was right. He said, I believe. He didn't wait. He didn't stutter. He said, I believe. And if there's real repentance, when you lead someone to Christ, they'll believe. They'll accept it. They'll be, oh my God, I'll take it. Like, touch me. Do what I, I want it. Why? Because God has brought me along the process. This is the point I was waiting for. How can I get it? How can I receive it? He said, just believe. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. Somebody's got it. Experience the love of God. Hear about the love of God. Then they got to believe and accept the love of God. That's on the person. All the other stuff is on us. Now, here's this. All right. This, this, this is where you lose your church. But let's do it anyway. 1 John 4.10 You have your Bibles, 1 John 4.10. All right, here we go. You guys got it? You see what it says? Four eleven. Four eleven. Well, ten is good. That's the propitiation. I say that I like to use big words. That way, you think I'm a smart preacher. <laughs> so I throw that propitiation. Like, oh man, the pastor was deep this Sunday. He said something about the propellers in my side. Yeah, the pastor was. He was hot. He was hot. Jordan, I was lit. Jordan, not even listening. My own son, not even listening. Lord help me. <laughs> Come here, like that. Here we go. Here we go. Four eleven. Like I said, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now there needs to be a demonstration of God's love. Here it is. If God so loved us, we also ought to love 
one another. The Bible, Christ says, you cannot say that you love God and hate your brother. Here, let me give you this. I'm breaking down all these misconceptions. Most people think they can love back on God. Can somebody give me give me three ways to show love? Somebody, anybody, just how, 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 th give me one way. Gifts. 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 Time. Helping. Speaking to them nicely and kindly. Helping. Helping them. What else? Anything else? Smiling. All that stuff is great. But none of that works with God. Can't help God. He's God. <laughs> you can't speak to God and make him feel better about being God. He's God. <laughs> you can pray to him, but you're saying more nice things about God or saying bad things about God does not change who he is. You follow what I'm saying? So uh, we, as human beings, are unable to please and bless. We can't. He's God. You, you follow what I'm saying? I want you to get that. But God said, but there is a way you can show me your love for me. Amen. You with me? Here it is. Love, not me, not a God you can't see, but love, all that stuff you just said, kind words, gifts, time, all that, don't give it to me as God. Him. Her. Her. Him. That's how you prove Amen. Your love to God. And, and I got and I'm reading why I'm working this. I get people all the time say, Oh, I love God. I just love God. Amen. And I keep looking, well, where's the evidence of it? And they think by saying I love God that God feels loved. He does not. He's giving you the process. God said, if you want me as God to feel love, this is how you do it. Her. Those kids love them. If you love them, God said, I'll know you love me. Amen. You love him. If you can help them, he said, then I'll know that you love me. So in the process, you got to experience the love of God. You got to hear about the love of God. Then you got to believe and accept it. But then after you accept the love of God, you have to start demonstrating. James says, faith without works. Where are your works of love? Where are they? Point them out. Give me their names. Text me their names now. Text me right now. Pastor, here is someone. I showed them the love of God. Pastor, here is someone. I did this for them. And I didn't ask anything in return. These are the these are the demonstration of God's love. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. Now the rest of John doesn't detail what this man did. But I can, I, just by, from what we've read, I, I, I don't know for sure, so I'm not going to lie and say I do. But I feel confident that this guy went around telling people about what Jesus had done for him. I, 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 just, I can't swear it. It's not in the word of God. I just believe that he did. And not only that, I think he had a real heart for blind people. I just believe that he did. That he could say, he did this in my life. And I was once blind. But now I see. And they all want to jump. Yeah, I want to. No, 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 brother. Not see naturally. Yes, 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 yes. But I see so much more now spiritually. Now that I've experienced the love of God. Now that I've heard. Now that I've believed in and accepted in my own life the love of God. Now that I'm working it out. I see so much more of God now than I've ever did before. Yeah. Then lastly, 
I'll finish with this. I'm out of time. Now you got to grow in the love of God. This, now I'm really going to lose the church. Go to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. And we're done. How many of you came to church hoping to shout today? Hoping to dance? All I can say is come back next Sunday. We're not, we not dancing today. But you can become a part of the process though. I'm more concerned about us getting the process right. Here it is, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12. Go to it. 3, 12. Am I in the right place? No, I'm in Colossians. No wonder. <laughs> Look. And it, Sister Nita, let me tell you a secret. Anytime you're in the wrong place, don't admit it. <laughs> Just act like you in Thessalonians. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. And while they reading it, you flip to it. Like, oh, yeah. First Thessalonians 3 and 12. Let the church say. Yeah, that's my real church. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. May the Lord make you in. Oh. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another. You know what increase means? Grow. Do you know what abound means? Abound means to flow over. Are you with me? Increase and abound in love to one another and to all. So the one another is to the household of faith. The all is to everybody else. Amen. So we have to grow in love not only to us, which should be should be easy, not always easy, but it should because what? We're reciprocating. You're loving me, and guess what I'm doing? I'm loving you. Right? It, any Luther Vandross fans? Former time uh, before BC before Christ. <laughs> Look, Luther used to say this. I love you back. Yeah. And when that is so, yeah. hey, hey, I love you back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to another Bible. Man. Try this one, try this one. Uh, say that, that, go to 4 and 9. Thessalonians, go to 4 and 9. Here it is. Here it is, that's the end of it. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you or to teach you about it. For you yourselves are taught by the pastor, by Apollos, Paul, Oprah. If they've really been converted, this is what I. All right, uh, wait, let me go back. Here it is. And now I'm finished. But I want you to get it. Here it is. Here it is, Ty. We finished. Here it is. First Corinthians, this is the process. He says, verse 6 Paul says, I planted seed in your heart. What's the seed? The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Alright? He said, I planted seed. Apollos watered it. He watered it either by teaching more about the love of God. He watered it by being kind to you and demonstrating the love of God. You follow what I'm saying? He said, and then he said, Paul, but it was God who made it grow. Amen. I asked you guys to get the book, Love Your Way to Victory, preaching, teaching on the love of God. I can preach on the love of God for the rest of my preaching days. And it wouldn't make any difference in the world. If the love of God is not first planted in you by the word of God. My telling you to be nice won't make you be nice. The only thing that will cause you to be nice is to have that seed down inside of you. 
that God does this. Where does the seed grow? Tell me where the seed grows. Where does the seed grow? In, she said in the ground, but what I wanted you to say was what? Under. Where nobody can see it. That's a sign that what? God's working. If it's above ground, we can see that. No, Todd helped him do that. She helped him get that. No, but when something starts working under the ground, who works under the, do you work under the ground? The only one I know that works under the ground is God. God works under all of our stuff. Stuff. Underneath all of our issues, all of our problems, God is working both to will and to do according to his own good pleasure. And he works under the ground, but he works with seed that you have planted. He works with acts of love that you have demonstrated. And throughout the process, God works on them and he turns a broken life into something beautiful in the master's hand and all he needs are some people who will trust the process and tell God I'm available anywhere in the process anything you need done in their life Lord, I'm available. I'll lead them to Christ if that's the role I must play. I'll demonstrate love if that's my assignment in the process. You with me? Look, that's it. That's it. It's over. You got the last slide? There it is. I don't need you to trust the sixes. I need you to trust God. And I need you today to tell God I'm available to participate in the process. Paul said, I did one part, Apollos did another. When we work together, you do the work, you bring them. Someone in the church is kind and nice to them, that gets their heart broken. Then me or whoever else is preaching, come along and we lay in the seed of the word of God. Then they get in the meet and greet and they're loved on. They get in the fellowship after the service and outside of the church. And while we're at home sleeping, God is working. <laughs> working in the same process that you participated in. And in God's own time, the same life that others gave up on it's the same life that God can recreate. He, re he, he gave the man sight where he was blind. If you got it, say, I got it. Today, today, will you trust the process? We've all got a role to play. Each day, each hour, we're open and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. He'll use us. Our gifts, our talent, our time.